Hello. It was my birthday this week and I have some lovely art things to show you. Some of them were things which I bought for myself and some of them were gifts from other people. So the first thing was this um, lovely box from a friend that I made when I was at university and she's incredible at um, remembering my birthday every year. And she'd filled up this box with um, like packing beans and individually wrapped uh, every item in it and it was so fun. Um, so <laughs> as well as some nice um, chocolate and toiletries, um, she bought me this kit for journaling. And there are some nice washi tapes and then all kinds of lovely um, craft items. So there's a Micron pen and a mono, Tombow Mono Zero um, eraser, a Tombow brush pen, uh, a couple of um, Uniball pens. And then an Aquafine um, Sable round from De La Roni, which I'm excited to try out. There's also some Caran d'Ache gouache, which I've not actually used before, so I'm really keen to try gouache from a different brand. I've only used Winsor Newton gouache before. Tombow Tape Runner. Darwent mechanical pencil. I've not used a Darwent one before. And then I was also quite excited that there are some Derwent chroma flows. I've not tried these before, so I'm very excited to uh, swatch them out and compare them with the coloured pencils which I have. And then it all came with um, a Rhodia gold book. And then a cult pens, a, a QR code uh, with a workshop, uh, access to a workshop video on journaling, journaling with purpose. So I think that was a really, really acute present. And um, my friend knows me well, let's put it like that. <laughs> So I've not had a Rodia gold book before, so I'm just going to open it and take a look inside. It's kind of a, um, a faux leathery cover. It's nice. So it's a dot. So it's a dot layout and the pocket at the back. That's really nice. So along the, along the same lines, another notebook that I've got to try out is um, uh, one that my son Tom sent me, and he works with leather, and he also sent me a little leather bookmark that he made. So I'll just take a look at the moleskin. So slightly um, narrower than the Rhodia, but again with a nice kind of leather, I'm assuming faux leather cover. And this time it's completely um, plain pages. And again, the pocket in the back. Oh, they're lovely. I would enjoy using those. So a few weeks ago, I bought myself the Rosa Gallery uh, Romantic palette. And I really, really enjoyed these colours and the, and the paints. But I was curious about the single pigments from Rosa Gallery. And so I've bought myself some more Rosa Gallery pans. 
a lot in this set are semi-opaque or multi-pigment um, paints and I went for them just for the sheer joy of the colours really and this this time I this oh these are from cult pens they sent me an extra pen and some love hearts um so yeah with the paints with the paints these this time I mainly opted for single pigment transparent paints. So, uh, and also they all have three star light fast ratings, which is the highest light fast rating. So I've got Royal Brown. Um, so that's transparent and sig single pigment PBR 25. I've got the PV19, this is Quinacridone Lilac. Again, three star light rating, transparent. And there's uh, is that flame, flame red, um, PO73. Auraline, Auraline, I don't know how to pronounce that, sorry. PY150. This is emerald green, which is PG7. Cerulean Blue, uh, PB36. This is Golden Yellow, PY110. Bright Blue, which is PB15, colon 3. And then I got uh, Cadmium Lemon. This is uh, semi opaque. But single pigment uh, PY35. And I've got turquoise, which is transparent but two pigments, uh, PB15 colon 3 and PG7. Uh, I just like turquoise and the fact it was transparent was, was enough for me. And then I've got blue indanthrene, which is transparent PB60. And then I got a single pigment PG17 chromium oxide, though this is opaque. But these are from Rosa Gallery's mono pigment set, it's called. And then one extra, which is neither transparent or single pigment, but I just had it recommended by a couple of people and I like the look of it. And that's black grape and it's PBK7, PB19, PB3. So I will, I will swatch those out at some point and I'm going to do a separate video on colour mixing with the Rosa Gallery colours and just see how good they are at mixing. I haven't done much painting with these yet. So yeah, I'm, I'm really curious about these paints. And I've got uh, a tin that I've had for a while. That I, it's an empty one that I cleaned out. So I'll put my spare Rosa Gallery uh, paints in this tin. Um, next up are some things that um, I've been wanting to try out for a while. And that's, I wanted to be able to do uh, sketching with waterproof black ink. So I've got some carbon ink by platinum and I've got a Lamy fountain pen it's the Lamy Safari now I had one of these in the past and the ink ended up drying up in it and I just I didn't overly enjoy using it but I have read that you need to actually work with it a little bit to get the nib nicer to use so I thought they aren't expensive pens really and I thought I'd give it another go and, and use it more this time. And also people have said that the carbon ink is quite good at not clogging up fountain pens. So I thought that might be my best bet. And I got uh, it with a medium tip. And I've also got um, an ink converter. 
so I can just draw ink from the bottle instead of using cartridges. And the other thing I wanted to try was the Perfect Pencil from Faber-Castell. So it's just a regular pencil, but it's got like a, a, a cap or it can be used as a pencil extender if, if necessary. Um, that's the rubber that comes with it and it also has a little sharpener in the lid. So I just, I just thought that was a, a fun thing to try out. So yeah, so that's those. I'm going to come back to quite a few of the products and give them a try out during this video. And then I have a book that um, another of my sons picked out for me, uh, Expressive Sketchbooks by Helen Wells. And I've had a quick flick through and it looks absolutely lovely. I follow Helen Wells on Instagram and I, I love her bright, free kind of expressive style of art. So I'm really excited to read this and hopefully be inspired. Yeah, that looks lovely. I love the colours that she uses as well. Just really cheerful and bright and happy. And then this is uh, <laughs> this is my um, my main birthday present from my husband, <laughs> and this actually only just came today. And it's the core twenty four set of five millimeter tubes. Uh, in watercolours. So I am really excited to try these out. I mean, there's no way on earth I need any more paints at all, but I was really excited to see how well these paints disperse and I ended up just wanting to try them out for myself. So I'll take a look inside. good to have the whole list there. At first I was interested in getting the the set of six which I can't remember what it's called I think it's maybe bright chroma set and that included the cobalt teal, the quinacridone gold, I think it was the green gold The dioxazine purple, the quinacridone magenta, and there was one other, but I can't remember what it is at the moment. And the cost of the six was about the third of the price of the set of 24. So I ended up going for these. Oh, actually, I think it was the transparent pyrrole orange that was in the set of six. So yeah, I'm super excited to try them out. And also um, some people have compared the dispersion of the Rosa Gallery paints to the dispersion of the core watercolours. So I'm interested to compare those in particular. And then the final thing that I had is a delivery of a few things from Jackson's Art. So I've got a, a Cardi pad, some Arches watercolour. I've got a paintbrush and and I've got a replacement for my quinacridone deep gold from Daniel Smith. And this is still the um, PO48 and PY150 formula. So I was glad to see that there. I got this brush. It's a rigger and I haven't I haven't got a rigger in this size and I wanted to try out one. I've not tried Winsor & Newton uh, brushes before either. So I thought I'd give this one a go. And then following on from the cold press watercolour paper video that I did a while back, um, a few people recommended 
the cardi paper in a thicker weight. So I bought a little book. This is again 100% cotton, but it's uh, 210 GSM. And then as I'm quite new to 100% cotton, I'd got the cold pressed Archer's paper and found it very, very rough. And so I was curious how the hot pressed compares and if I enjoy painting on this uh, more than the, the cold press. So first of all, I think I'm going to try loading up my fountain pen and having, just having a quick go at writing with it. So what is this? Fami Safari. I really like the width of this nib actually. I think I had a fine one before, which might have been some of the reason I didn't get on with it. I do like very juicy pens. Oh, can I just sketch super quickly? Just, this is the chocolate my friend bought me. I'll just see how it sketches out. It doesn't seem to be, it doesn't seem to have any issues with, with the ink flow, which is lovely. Um, it doesn't seem, the nib doesn't seem scratchy, as I remember my old one being. So yeah, I think I'm going to. I think I'm going to enjoy sketching with that. Let's see what. Yeah, that's. That's keeping up nicely. With the speed that I want to go at. Great. So that's, yeah, that's the Lamy Safari. And I haven't even got too much ink on me. <laughs> um, I'm going to have a go at the, using the two paint brushes that I've got next. So I'll just use some of this um, Caran d'Ache Cyan uh, gouache that came in like the journaling set from my friend. So this is the zero sized um, synthetic sable rigger. I've not used riggers. I've got, I think I've got one or two like broader, higher number riggers, so I haven't really got much to compare this to. I'm actually taking part in a sailing competition next week, so I might even have some photos of sailboats. Where I need to use a rigger brush. I give our bunny some blue whiskers. And then the other brush is uh, the De La Rowney Aquafine Sable Round.
and point seems to come together really nicely. Look at these other pens. So this is the Uniball Signo. Let's see what width it is. Can't see it offhand. It looks kind of like I don't know, 0 0.5, 0 0.7. And then I've had um, pigment microns in the past. Yeah, just a, a nice, reliable fine liner pen. And this is the Fudano Suki, the brush pen. I think Tombow have different. Um, the stiffnesses of a uh, brush pen so I'm not sure uh, what this oh yeah here we go it's hard tip so it's water-based pigment ink hard tip so let's My my all time favourite are the Foodie Touch uh, brush pens. So I'm I'm not sure it's quite as enjoyable to use as that, but I'll I'll have a good play around with this one. And um, it does seem nice. It does seem a nice, a reliable tip on it. So next, I needed a little play with the core paints, and there's actually quite a few of the colours. Actually, I'll just show you first. I've turned them on their side so that the colours are more visible because they're not, you can't see them very well when the tube's lying on its front or back. And I've laid them out in the order that they come on the sheet. I'm not going to swatch them out fully here. I just want a little play. So this is the cadmium yellow primrose. I've got some empty pans that I can squeeze these into. I've got quinacridone gold. Oops, it's coming out so fast. First quinacridone gold that I've actually tried. I've got quinacridone gold deep. Oh, they really do spread. I have so much fun with those. I'm glad that I've got a quinacridone gold. Um, I've been thinking a lot about natural looking greens, both ones that I already own and ones uh, which I'll, I'll mix myself. And I really like the mixes that I can get with quinacridone gold deep. So I'm going to have fun playing around mixing greens with this quinacridone gold as well. So much is coming out of these. So this is the first permanent alizarin crimson that I've tried as well. Wow. <laughs> I am not disappointed in the dispersion rate of these paints. Wow, they're so pigmented and beautiful. Now I do have a Crenacridone magenta but this was one of the ones in the bright chroma set that I wanted to try out. Oh, 
loads is coming out the tube. I'm going to have to decant this into um, from my mixing palette into pans so that I don't waste it. <laughs> yeah, Conacridone Magenta. Wow. So nice. Sorry, this is a really annoying swatch for anyone watching this because there's not an awful lot of rhyme or reason to it at the moment. I will do a much better review video separately on these. So I'm picking out Viridian now because I don't, I don't have a true Viridian, which is, um, is it PG-18? Yeah, PG-18. I've... I've got a Gallows Viridian, but that's a mixed pigment, one with PG7 in it. But I'll do I'll do comparisons when I do a core paint video on its own. This is also the first, just a uh, plain sap green that I've had. This reminds me of smoke flare going off. <laughs> wow. So this sap green is uh, PG36, PR101, PY150. Right, I'll just try out the last one and then that'll do it. I'm just trying out the green gold. This is also my first green gold. I've got Roman Schmoll's deep green gold. So you can see why I got tempted into buying the whole set of 24 because there are quite a lot that I don't have. Well, my first impressions are that these are gorgeous. And then there's just um, one of the Rosa Gallery paints that I'm going to try now. And that's the Black Grape that a couple of viewers recommended. So. Just try that one out. But I should imagine that today or tomorrow I'll want to swatch the rest of them out and do a full Rosa Gallery video. I just realised when I was painting this that I was kind of half expecting to smell like a grape soda kind of smell when I was painting it. I'm not sure if that's, I think I was maybe expecting it to be more uh, coloured than that, either purpley or pinky, but that's still a very nice black. And then the other thing I want to do super quickly is just try out a couple of the Derwent Chroma Flow.
Oh, they're definitely nice to colour with. I'm just curious to try out them compared with a couple of my others. Okay, so this... That's the Chroma Flow. And then I've got a Prisma Colour. I think the Prisma colour still feels like the colour comes away from it the most easily. Um, and then this is Caran d'Ache Luminance. Interesting. I think it's definitely up there and the chroma flow is definitely up there in terms of the enjoyability of using. But obviously this is just a couple of second scribble. So I'll I'll do a proper review on these and uh, a more in-depth comparison. But yeah, that's that's really I'm really really happy I've got those. So yes, I feel thoroughly spoiled on my birthday and I can't wait to take a more in-depth look at these products and have a real play with them. Thanks ever so much for watching. Bye!